Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Lorenzo. I'm uh, from DataShift. Um, I have a past in uh, NLP and uh, uh, machine learning, but uh, as of late, I've been more interested in uh, uh, simply uh, dealing with lots and lots of information at a very large large scale, and that's what uh, uh, got me into DataShift uh, uh, early on. Uh, so, uh, first of all, a quick word about DataShift, what we do and what we are. Uh, we are partners with Twitter, so we receive uh, uh, what they call the firehose, that is the entirety of the public messages. Uh, as you post them on Twitter, we get them as well within milliseconds. Uh, we uh, analyze everything, we make the information richer, and we have this uh, very powerful and scalable platform uh, to uh, filter the, the data, so you can uh, uh, create actionable uh, content and uh, do something useful about it. Um, I'm going to show this uh, picture again. Uh, Sue already showed it. Uh, I think it's quite uh, interesting in many ways, uh, but the best way uh, I usually show this picture is just by pointing at which portion of a tweet is actually the text. So we receive uh, 140 characters with a tweet, but we have an extra two kilobytes of data, metadata. Uh, as I said, it's all about uh, profile information like the age profile, uh, the, the gender, the location, the description, uh, the information about the tweet itself, so from uh, where it's sent, uh, which application is, has been used to post it, uh, what uh, the location, and many other uh, useful bits that uh, add to the information. Uh, so why am I showing these? Well, because uh, I think uh, there is still a, a bit of a, a mentality of uh, thinking about text uh, as something you search on with keywords. Uh, but actually, there is a lot more you can do. It's not just about search and keywords. You can uh, look at metadata that is available. This is an example of a tweet, but all the other contents, like uh, blogs and uh, forums, have the same amount of metadata. Uh, so being able to analyze the same information uh, via different uh, uh, aspects, different facets, it's really, really becoming more and more useful. Uh, this is a, uh, an overview of our platform. I don't know how many of you are technical. <laughs> I'll keep it a super high level, don't worry. I'll explain uh, uh, the important bits. Uh, but uh, again, if you want to know anything specific, I'm more than happy to dive in and uh, explain the technical bits. So uh, what, we, what we do is we start from the ingestion of different streams. Uh, Twitter is the main one, uh, but it's not the only one. We get uh, several types of content. Uh, we get data from the main social media sites. Uh, we get data from uh, blogs, forums, message boards. Uh, we also get uh, data from uh, reviews, uh, review sites, uh, videos, photos. And uh, uh, recently, we started uh, expanding outside the field of uh, social media to the uh, news agencies as well. So we have uh, uh, we get the data from Thomas Reuters, uh, from uh, uh, Associated Press, uh, from uh, Al Jazeera, and I think we cover over 700 uh, major newspapers around the world. Uh, so anything from New York Times to Chicago Tribune to. Um, and we are expanding these uh, sources more and more. So you can have uh, the news, and then all the buzz around the news. It's not, so the source and the comments about the source. It's not just one way of looking at the data. And uh, we don't limit ourselves to what we get. We also do a lot about making the information richer and richer. So we use uh, Lexalytics. This is a, uh, a good showcase for their, their platform, I guess. Uh, we use it a lot. Um, we use it for sentiment analysis. We do uh, use it for topics analysis. We extract uh, uh, named entities, like uh, uh, names of people, companies, uh, dates, places, and so on. Uh, we also analyze the profile of each user. Uh, so we, we know their interests, whether they are influential, and what topics they are influential about. Uh, we do language detection, of course. Uh, basic demographics, anything from gender to age to uh, just a, a profiling of uh, uh, things that go quite uh, deep. And at one point, uh, 
we are thinking about anonymizing some of the data because, uh, the, like the person asked before, there are some privacy concern, concerns around how uh, much data you can actually show about users. Even if it's all public data, there are quite a lot of concerns. Uh, we do trends analysis, so we can tell uh, in real time whether uh, a message is about a trending topic and whether the, 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 that topic is trending now, this week, here in Boston, in the, in the UK, or wherever. And we also uh, resolve every single link that is posted with a message. So even if it's a bit.ly link or a t.co link, uh, so a short URL, we unravel the, the link, we follow the entire redirect chain, until we get to the real target page. So we can also extract the, the title of the target page and we extract uh, the body and we can do an analysis on the target page as well. So we can uh, basically add context back to the, the origin uh, tweet. So for instance, if you have a tweet that says awesome and then you have a link, uh, just from that tweet you have zero context, nothing. So if we follow the link and we attach the information about the target page, then you can say, oh, actually, this person is being, being very positive about topic that is mentioned in the article. So you can extract a lot more useful information. The second part of the diagram is uh, the core filtering engine. Uh, and this is uh, uh, receiving two types of uh, data. Uh, from the bottom, uh, we receive the input streams that I mentioned earlier, and then uh, from the right, we receive all the filters that are specified by the customers. Uh, these are not filters we specify, we let customers uh, decide exactly what they want, and they can uh, fine tune uh, their own stream, and the output is uh, completely custom to them. Uh, I mentioned filters, and I didn't say keywords because we can really look into any of the metadata uh, that we offer. Uh, you can search or uh, have matches against any of those fields. You know, I think we cover uh, a few hundreds different fields uh, for every message, so you can do things like, uh, okay, uh, give me all the messages uh, about uh, Lexalytics or Salience uh, that are uh, posted from uh, Boston uh, specifically from this hotel uh, by people speaking English or Dutch um, and whose profile uh, is uh, describing themselves uh, in, and they are describing themselves as CEOs or uh, managers in general uh, and they have at least uh, 500 followers on the internet. So you can be very, very specific. So it's uh, making use of all this information to, to really extract the gold bits. Uh, the third part is all about uh, the website itself uh, and the API. Uh, so this is where you can interact with the site, you can uh, use uh, some widgets to create filters, or you can talk to the API and uh, get information. We also have some uh, basic widgets on the site, so we can display either the tweets as they are being posted, uh, some basic diagrams of uh, average sentiment, uh, demographics, uh, volume, uh, and, and those are specific to your stream. Uh, and then we also offer an API, so you can interact with the site, you can receive data, and you can stream, stream data directly into your analytics application or into your engine so you can uh, analyze it further. And the last part is about monitoring and storage. We are nuts about monitoring. We, I think we collect about a million metrics every second. Uh, we want to know everything about uh, what happens uh, in the platform every, every second because uh, we have so much data flowing into the system that even a one second downtime means uh, losing five, 6,000 messages and we don't want that. Um, and the other bit is about storage. So we receive a lot of data and we record everything. Uh, so mentioned Hadoop, that's what we use as well. Uh, everyone uses Hadoop in, the, in this uh, field. Uh, but we don't limit ourself, uh, ourselves to Hadoop. We also uh, did a lot of uh, uh, research and experimentation how to make uh, the, uh, the fruition of this data even faster, more parallel. So we, we can really uh, go back in time and analyze the data and uh, uh, match uh, a custom filter against uh, uh, past data 
and we can do it at a speed which is more or less four plus 40 uh, times faster than the real-time stream. So we have both real-time data and historical access. Uh, as I said, we care a lot about uh, scaling and performances. Uh, this is uh, the number of uh, servers uh, that are allocated to each service, uh, and each box in that diagram has anywhere between two and uh, 60 different services, uh, servers, uh, depending on the load of each component. Some numbers. Uh, at any time, depending on the time of the day, uh, we have between 3.5 thousand messages uh, up to uh, probably 12 thousand messages per second that we receive. Uh, most of them are from Twitter. Uh, we have about two terabytes of data flowing into the system and going to the storage every day. And we have uh, thousands of uh, custom streams uh, and uh, different people and different uh, companies connected at all times. Um, some numbers about how we use Lexalytics. Uh, we, uh, we chose Lexalytics because it's probably the only product that can handle this load at the speed we want. Um, and we use it for sentiment analysis, for topics extraction, and for uh, named entities. Um, we uh, use all the uh, four languages they support, and we hope they will expand it to more languages. Uh, the load uh, is, uh, we, we have uh, uh, seven servers dedicated to, to just uh, Lexalytics um, analysis. We also optimized it with a custom wrapper, so we uh, strip, strip it down to the bare minimum that we need so we can save uh, power. Uh, and on average, uh, each message takes about 20 milliseconds uh, to be processed by uh, uh, Lexalytics. Um, some numbers. Uh, these are uh, graphs over time during the day uh, of the different languages we receive and, and we pass to uh, Lexalytics. Uh, so these are numbers per second. So each time between one and three thousand messages per second per language. language. Uh, there is a difference between uh, short and long text because uh, uh, analyzing uh, two different types of content can be quite different uh, and they require different models. Uh, so Lexalytics offers different models and we use uh, uh, short uh, uh, training sets for uh, tweets and uh, the long, uh, the, the training set, uh, the models trained on large attacks for blogs and other content. Um, again, the CPU load for each machine is quite, quite high. Uh, I think that's enough for the platform. Again, I'm really happy to dive in if you have uh, any questions. Uh, I thought it would be more interesting to show some uh, actual use cases. Um, so I'll start with uh, a premise, uh, which is, again, uh, going back to the first slide about what we get uh, in a tweet. It's not just about text. And uh, as Sue uh, said earlier, uh, you get real insight when you start combining different streams, different, different uh, uh, sources, and you analyze the information from different uh, facets. If you only look at, at data volume or uh, you only filter by topic, then what you get out of it is limited or uh, really bears no news because uh, you, you can guess most of it. But if you start correlating uh, volume, the sentiment, uh, the topics, uh, the influence of the, uh, the people that talk about them, then you can really find interesting correlation, correlations that aren't obvious straight away. This is a, a quick analysis we did uh, back in January. Um, this is uh, uh, the uh, Research in Motion uh, uh, announcement uh, uh, when they uh, announced that their two CEOs resigned. And uh, we could see that there was a huge spike in, uh, in, the, in the buzz around uh, this news. Uh, and as we can see, it was mostly negative, as the news uh, wasn't really positive. So the, the, the people talked about it in a very uh, negative way. Uh, the news broke on Sunday night, Sunday evening, uh, on the website. Uh, these on the left side, uh, left hand side, is uh, the moment when the news was uh, uh, shown on the website. If we analyze what happened on Monday morning when the stock market opened, 
then we can start having a look at really interesting things. So this is when the stock uh, opened, the market opened, and uh, as expected, the stock price went downhill uh, pretty fast. Um, but then at one point, there is something that happened. This is where uh, the public opinion about uh, uh, research in motion started changing from mainly negative to suddenly quite positive. And what we see is that about five minutes later, uh, this change in opinion, the stock prices start, stopped falling and started stabilizing around a support level. And it kept uh, more or less to that level for uh, quite a long time. So it really reflected uh, the, the opinion. So uh, from this uh, very simple example, we can uh, uh, gather two facts. One is that uh, the importance of the news is always reflected by the amount of traffic that is generated. And we can really see the difference between positive and negative uh, uh, sentiment towards news to understand what the overall opinion of the people is. And second, we can also uh, gather some insights. Uh, why a change in opinion uh, uh, meant uh, a change in the stock price value? Well, probably because people realized that at one level, uh, the price was so low that it was well be below the market value and started uh, uh, thinking that, well, it can't go much more further down. Uh, this is another uh, experiment we did uh, more recently, less than two weeks ago. Uh, Facebook had uh, its IPO. We started collecting uh, uh, word clouds of all the terms that are being talked about, uh, both in neutral, positive, and negative way. Uh, we started analyzing that and correlating to the uh, demographics, so we can also uh, see whether it's mainly uh, many people that talk uh, bad about Facebook or vice versa. And this is uh, similar to the research in motion uh, uh, analysis we did. Again, we tried a, a very simple experiment, just con combin uh, combining two different uh, uh, sources. One is the sentiment and the volume of uh, uh, tweets uh, and messages on the social networks about the Facebook IPO. And the second one is the actual value of the stock. And again, we could notice a fairly strong correlation between the two. So when uh, just before the market opened, uh, the, the sentiment towards the IPO was really negative. And uh, as soon as the market opened, the Facebook, IPO, uh, the Facebook uh, uh, stock went down. And then it followed more or less uh, the, the opinion. Again, it's not a perfect match, but there are quite a few pointers there. Uh, again, this is a super simple example. I wouldn't rush uh, to create uh, some uh, trading bots just based on these, but still uh, probably interesting. And of course, if you start co correlating more data, so you have layers of information, not just the sentiment and the stock price, but you also have uh, the influence of people in the diagram. You understand who is uh, influential about economics uh, and uh, markets uh, in the, like, the diagram. Then you can start uh, noticing better patterns than just these. Uh, this is another uh, fun experiment we, experiment we did. We analyzed uh, a 1% random sample of the entire firehose, and uh, we started have a look, having a look at the topics that have been mentioned most frequently. And not surprisingly, uh, food, games, uh, the weather, uh, automotive, um, uh, sports are fairly to um, uh, popular topics, just properly like in real life. It's not that different. Uh, now, imagine combining this information with uh, location data, and I'm sure that a lot of uh, interesting patterns could emerge. This is another uh, test we did. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, there was uh, the mayor election in London. We analyzed uh, uh, over time during the campaign, uh, the political campaign, uh, the volume and sentiment of messages uh, about uh, the, the two uh, uh, contestants. And uh, what we noticed that during the campaign was more or less uh, um, even. Uh, the, it was a, a fairly balanced uh, 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 race uh, until the very end when uh, uh, suddenly and there was uh, an outburst of positive sentiment uh, towards Boris and uh, he was re-elected. This uh, uh, is another example. 
we started analyzing all the um, um, topics that uh, people interested in fashion talk about. Um, since we can collect uh, thousands of different metrics and consider many, many parameters at once, uh, we decided to follow what all the uh, followers of the Burberry uh, Twitter account say. Uh, and so we have uh, we analyzed uh, about 500,000 uh, uh, people that follow the Burberry account and what they talk about on the internet. And we started analyze, analyzing, of course, the topics, and fashion is, of course, up there at the top, uh, but also the other topics they are interested in about. And we started analyze, analyzing also the uh, sites they use to uh, share things on. Uh, there are some uh, uh, photo sharing sites in there, like uh, Facebook, Flickr, and so they, they share fashion items. Uh, but we also uh, analyze, uh, we could see also um, fashion magazines like Vogue and uh, others. And we can also see what sites they use to trade and exchange uh, fashion items. So uh, anything from eBay to Etsy, which is quite popular here in the US for handcrafted items. We also analyzed what they care about and the entities they mention. So it was quite interesting. We did this uh, uh, analysis for Burberry, and several of their competitors were above Burberry. So it's also useful as a feedback for the company itself to understand where they, they stand in, the, in their own market. And finally, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, an API, so it's very easy to stream this information into your application, and uh, you can really start uh, uh, getting something really useful out of it. Uh, this is an example uh, integration we had with Salesforce. Um, think about how many companies have Salesforce internally to, to manage their customers, and uh, the amount of information you have about your, the customers is very limited. But we, we started uh, linking those accounts to uh, their uh, social presence, and we can uh, show uh, all the topics they, they care about. We can show the brands they, they, mentions, uh, they mention and their sentiment towards those brands. Um, we can also uh, analyze the engagement they have with the websites of the, of the uh, brand itself or other brands. So we can really tell uh, what they do on the internet, what, what things that they care about. So uh, you, you have a better picture of your customers straight away in that dashboard you're very used, used to uh, without having to move a finger. And uh, we also did uh, a similar experiment uh, always uh, uh, also in uh, Salesforce. Uh, and we analyze, uh, analyzed uh, all the messages uh, from uh, any of the people following O2, a major telecom like uh, T-Mobile or Verizon. Um, and we started analyzing, uh, again, the topics, the sites they, they use, uh, the sentiment towards each topic. And we could also break it down by age group, uh, by um, gender, by uh, social profile. So we, we can really inspect uh, what they care about. And uh, it's very easy to drill into one of those metrics and uh, see what, what the um, demographics are of the people who talk about video games. Um, and uh, you, we can see that it's mostly 30 years old and not uh, teenagers that play video games. Um, and also, we, uh, in, from uh, this uh, screen, we could, we could tell the, um, the opinion towards the company itself and towards the company uh, who's the main competitor. So it's always uh, good to have a reality check over uh, where you stand and what you can improve. So, so you can also analyze things like the sentiment towards your product or a feature of your product, so you can intervene and have a better customer support or improve the application itself, or at least target a certain audience in a much better way. Again, these are super simple examples. We don't do anything uh, too fancy. We specialize in uh, providing the feed of raw data. Raw data. Uh, I'm sure uh, Richard uh, later on will show you some interesting data, data and uh, many others uh, uh, will show better insights. Uh, but this is uh, just a, uh, a few simple examples you can uh, create like in a few minutes with uh, the platform. Uh, thank you uh, for your patience. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm uh, really happy to answer.
Uh, so one one tactical note: if you're having trouble logging into the wireless, use um, with the expired code. Use code May M A Y 2012 with May all caps. Any questions for Lorenzo? Lorenzo, thank you for the talk. How do you deal with the spam problem in Twitter? How? The spam problem. The spam problem. Well, um, that's something that we uh, indirectly manage because uh, we receive a lot of uh, status messages from Twitter. So they, are, they have their own uh, uh, spam control uh, systems. Uh, what we do is we also receive all the status updates uh, from them about users that are potential spammers. So we can react and uh, immediately uh, delete or hide tweets for those accounts, or we can pass along the information to the uh, final customer. Uh, we can uh, also do some uh, topic analysis. Uh, again, spam can uh, vary, vary uh, depending on the field, so it's very uh, difficult to do on uh, a generic base, but if you are, uh, if you care about a specific domain, it's very easy to create filters uh, to detect certain patterns in your specific domain. And again, the language we offer is uh, extremely powerful to detect uh, any pattern uh, and you can adjust the filter to uh, hide the messages that are most, most probably spam. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'll be in the corridor. Please grab me over lunch because I, I'm afraid I have to uh, dash after lunch. But if you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer. Thank you.